Hello, it is I. Welcome to episode 38 of the Country Bumpkin Creates podcast. My name is Lucy. Uh, I'm coming to you from... Oh, I've lost the plot. Where am I, where am I from? I'm from uh, a, town, a little town called Tavistock on the edge of Dartmoor. Um, today is Saturday the 1st of June um, and I've got a Saturday off so I thought I would record. Uh, welcome to any new viewers and welcome to any returning viewers. As you would have seen on the screen before you saw this, this um, you can find me on Instagram as country underscore bumps or you can find me on Ravelry as country bumps. Uh, well, we, we've got quite a few FOs today, um, but only what at the moment, because it is the 1st of June, so haven't cast on any June projects yet. Uh, I've only got one whip as we speak. Well, one active whip, should I say. I've got lots of others that are just, you know, languishing. They're on holidays. Uh, I am wearing the Shima tea. S H I M A T, which is in all these. Ooh, it's all boob then. Sorry. <laughs> you saw. Ooh, I might have to mark this explicit. <laughs> uh, so it's in all these beautiful colours. Um... <laughs> oh my god, I'm flashing. Um, so all these beautiful colours from Frankie Grey Fibres. This was a kit that they put together last year, year before. Um, and then I just used some undyed DK as the main colour. And then obviously my I did two stripes of each colour. Um, it's a short sleeved t-shirt. And I do love it. And I've probably got enough yarn. If I reversed the order, so did the... I'm, I'm going to flash it again. Did, started from the purple. That's for you, Bex. From the purple up, uh, down, I could probably get another one. If I um get some... I might get like a grey and do grey as the menopause brain main color we're going to probably might have a lot of this today because i get halfway through a sentence and i'm like nah can't remember what i was going to say or what the word is i'm trying to say so i might get some gray as the main color and then do another one but reverse the reverse the colors because i've probably got enough left of each one to to do that the only thing i don't i'm not is the increases are done here so it's a bit when you're doing stripe obviously the the original pattern isn't i don't think it's striped i've got a feeling it was all one color so you probably wouldn't see that so much but if that was on the back it would be better where have we been what have we done since we last spoke we last spoke in the middle of april and that I don't know whether it was the weekend or the weekend after. I was hanging off to a wonder wall with my girlies. We had an amazing time. Oh, I didn't bring my stash in. I'll do that. I'll get that directly because I'll need that to talk about my June project. Hold on one tiny little moment. I'm back with armfuls of yarn. I don't know now where to put it. Let's put that over here a minute. Oh, I dropped it one. Right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, yes, yeah, so we headed to Wonderwall. Um, weather wasn't brilliant. We went up on the Friday. Um, and we stayed just outside Brecon, which is about... Well, if there wasn't roadworks, it would have been half an hour, but there was a roadworks so that took us an hour to get into Wonderwall itself. Um, 
so we were yeah about half an hour away from the showground um in this beautiful house um it was an airbnb and it was beautiful really well equipped um so if you're thinking of going at any point let me know and i will send you the details for the house that we stayed in because it was really nice really really nice the lady next door the she had chickens in her garden and we'd gone out for a walk and when we came back she knocked on the door she's like i've just collected the eggs from the chickens and i've got too many would you like half a dozen eggs we were like thank you very much <laughs> we like this place um yeah so the house was really lovely so friday night we just chilled in our jammies and did some knitting and ate lots of nice food and then treats and sweeties and chocolates and yeah um saturday headed to the show uh spent all of saturday there um which was really lovely got to see lots of lovely people including our john and claire from bird street um I, I say john and claire like everybody knows who they are but if you've been watching me for a while you would know who they are um <sighs> twinset and pearl were there so we chatted to them for a little while um I can't remember who else we saw. I really apologise if I've missed you out. But it was lovely to see everyone that we did bump into. Um, bought a little bit of yarn, as you just saw. But most of it is for projects that I've... I lied. Three skeins are for a project. Um, but the, some of it was also like bargain bin purchases. Um which are, you know, irresistible, aren't they? Because they're a bargain. Um, yeah. Uh, then headed back to the house. It was flipping freezing and raining. It was so cold. Um, yeah, I felt sorry for the vendors because they must have been absolutely frozen. Um, yeah, so... After Wonderwall, headed back to the house. Again, had some really nice food. Um, cocktail beverage or two. Uh, and sat and knitted in our jam joes. Um, and then Sunday, headed home. So yeah, uh, it was lovely. It was really nice. Really nice to be with my ladies for the weekend um yeah i've really lost the plot today anyway so that was wonderful uh we'll look at what we did in april and may next so in my little my books so this one is my project journal and this one is my stats book so for April, my goals were to finish my Radvent cowl, finish the Dawn sweater, which I didn't get finished, unfortunately, but I did finish the Radvent cowl. I aimed to do two pairs of socks, didn't do either. Uh, I did the Mystery Gnome knit along, which I'll show you in a moment, and I finished... Oh, some... I finished the um, some quilting blocks, which I think I showed in the last. Yeah, I'm sure I showed in the last video that I'd finished them all. Um, so because we went to Wonderwall, I ended up with six thousand one hundred two meters in. I think we'd add flock as well, which added to my stash, and my meters out was one thousand and forty four. Point five one, and I completed three projects which was my Daphne chicken Nimble the gnome which was the mystery one and my Radvent cow and then in May my goal was to finish the dawn sweater three pairs of socks from sock tubes which I did uh, Neil gnome which I've done and I've started an emotional support chicken for my sister so in May, I 
I bought some yarn from a D stash, so I've ended up with and Claire has sent me some yarn for to make in or gave me they were down on holiday so she brought some yarn down for me to knit another sample for them so i've got 2579 meters in 2234 meters out um so i finished my dawn sweater neil gnome three i can't read backwards rainy day rum rainbow socks tommy socks and santa's rainbow socks so we shall show you those in a moment and for june so i've started a chicken for my sister so oh, that's my one whip at the moment i want to start the stripometry short which i've just printed out the pattern for and forgotten if i had a brain today i would be dangerous so we're gonna have another little pause while i go and get that right try again third time lucky hopefully this will be the last time we need to restart so this is the stripometry shawl from Stephen West um, and I really what drew me to it were these were the colors um, but it's done in Labby NMA and mama ain't got money for Labby NMA so it's this beautiful uh like limey green a speckle with the and like a uh lavendery purple and a speckle incorporating those colours. So when we were at Wonder War, my mission was to find um yarns th those colours. To make that sure so here we go i think we're pretty much pretty much got there sorry i just dropped something on the floor it's a shit show today isn't it <laughs> but when is it not so <laughs> these are the colours that I found uh, of course on my lovely bird streets this is the colour Beauregard as I think it's in like violet Beauregard you're turning violet violet um, so what started it was we found this and this was in this is from Bellica Yarns from lovely lady from a Brizzle um, and this was in her bargain bin. Right, we found it, but we 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 could only find it on DK. Um, there was none left in the in the fingering weight bargain bin. So we, I was like, that is perfect. But it was DK, and this needs fingering. So, um, Rachel was having a route 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 around, um, and then was like, oh my god, I found it. Somebody had put one skein in the back in the DK box, not in the fingering box. So it's got the the line the like highlighter yellow, greeny speckles, it's got the purple speckles. I can't remember. Law I think it's Laura from Bellica. And she was like, I'll I can dye you up the three colours that you need, it's not a problem. Because she'd seen the shawl as well and was really she was like, I'll dye them for you. Um, but then we found this so I was like perfect so that's one skein and then this one oh that hasn't got the purple in it but it's that perfect it's that grungy yellow that I wanted so this was from Antidote Yarns and Designs um, which were are a new to me dyer I've never never come across them before and the colour is radioactive it was really nice because there were lots of dyers in at Wonderwall that I'd never seen before and then obviously my third colour was the Beauregard so once we have finished recording this podcast if we ever get there because I keep stopping and this is more violet than it's showing more lavendery violet so oh, I need to keep stop, stop saying so so these will be a wound up 
directly after this podcast finishes and we will cast it on I've got three days off work now I've got today tomorrow and Monday off work so I intend to knit 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 uh we were talking about our goals weren't we that's where we were I might do a little bit of sewing I don't know yet depends but for once the weather is nice so I might set outside and knit. we've got Nigel's done all that we've changed the front garden around a little bit and we used to have um like a little two two chairs and a table not two tables on a chair no two chairs on a table but we've put a bird table where they were and that it we and it's in like full sun so we've moved the chairs to this little bit here which is quite a bit more shaded because i can't sit in the sun although because i am a pale person who just burns and yeah it's not fun so i tend to seek out shady areas um Where was I going? I've lost the plot. Really lost the plot. Yeah. So that's oh, one of my goals is to start this stripe on which is short. I don't know if I'll get it finished this month. To be honest, I'm not bothered if I don't get it finished this month. Um, my gnome for June is going to be Normanda. Look at her. Is she cool? She's cool, isn't she? I haven't picked colours or anything like yet. I've got a... a I've got a few mini skeins we can choose from. So a few thousand mini skeins probably. Um, so I'll just choose some colours. Uh, but I really love her pigtails. I think they're so cute. So Normanda will be cast on at some point And I need to crank some more tubes. So my last goal is to do one pair of socks, socks from a tube. I've got some tubes to crank for Rach. So I've got to get my crank on anyway to... Um, to do that so i will so i have an uh vintage imperia sock machine um and i crank tubes and then i cut them and add heels toes and cuffs um i hand knit those uh so we'll finish off with what i what else i bought at wonderwall so from the lovely all wool that ends wool I got this 50 gram um, zebra self-striping on zebra base. It's called Highlighters and it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, um, but it's the zebra um, and it's 183 metres for 50 grams, which I think is going to make some really cool socks. So I probably I won't crank these once I've got a pair of socks or I've got a tube that I'm knitting at the moment, which is like my what I call my social knitting. So when I go anywhere or if I've got an appointment or something like that, I just stick a few rows on a sock tube. So that I'll start that once I finish that one, I'll start that probably um, <clears throat> from the lovely Siobhan's Crafts. Again, these were from her bargain bin. So this one is called Blossom. Focus? Are we going to focus or no? There we go. So it's called Blossom and it's on her sock weight. 85% uh, superwash Polworth. I didn't realise it was Polworth. And 15% nylon. But it feels it feels like a merino. Um, Yeah. So that's really pretty. It's got lots of speckles, as we know from Siobhan. There's always get a speckle. And then this is a skein of DK called Will o' the Wisp DK. 75% merino, 25% nylon. Again, it's blowing out a little bit, but. Um, and then from Yarn Unique, again, this was on there from their bargains. 
it's got no colourway on it. Um, but it's a really pretty pink speckled. So I've got two skeins of that. Um, which I don't know what to do with yet. But if I, I can find a third skein and make a t-shirt out of it or something. I might get away with two skeins, but you never know. Um, yeah, so that's really pretty. Or I could do something colour work and to get a contrast. And then this, I haven't, this won't show to its full potential because I haven't got a blue light. But under UV, this really fluoresce. It's like an 80s disco or a 90s rave disco. Um, so this is from Chester Walls. It was a new base that they've just brought out. You've probably seen it all over the Instagrams. And it's 85% superwash merino and 15% percent neon donegal nep um and it was a new base that they were sh previewing and like i say all of these under a black light really like fluoresce they're really cool so i'm gonna dye that uh i don't know what color yet i don't know i'm gonna dye it and i i don't know whether to do like a muscle bra hat with it that's really attractive isn't it um, I don't know whether to do a muscle bra once I've dyed it or socks, but I think I'll be a bit lost on socks. Whereas if I go to a 90s rave with my muscle bra on, it'll be cool. And I also got um, Chester Wall had a table, um, and it was like five skeins for 20 quid or something like that of like undyed um yarn. So I got some of those as well. Oh, I also got a top to kit. I got another toft kit to do a cat, but I haven't got the picture with me because they didn't have the pattern. The pattern was sent to me. So I got three skeins of their toft DK um, to do like a stripy cat. Oh, actually, I've got four skeins because I've got two of this kind of. So I'm going to do one based on Billy, and this is like his main colour um so I've got two of the main colour one of the contra like that and one each of the contrast that I needed. Oh my god words this was my haul from oh, oh no I was there was somebody selling fabric so I got a just a plain like um things of jelly roll because when Nigel and I went to a quilt show up in North Devon when I had my week off for my birthday. I'm just trying to remember when it was. Um and I bought like a rainbow jelly roll. I don't know what I've done with it, I've put it away somewhere. It's tidied away somewhere. Um so I wanted some because I'm going to do, I might do a log cabin quilt with it, but do half. I bought some log cabin paper. Hang on, I'll reach it. Oh, yeah, I've got it on the front. So, this is what a log cabin square looks like. So, you start with a square and then you add. We all, we all know what a log cabin is, don't we? I knitted a log cabin blanket with my Dora Dora Harry Potter club. So, in this, so you can see in this one, there, half of it's white or, you know, half of it's a light colour and then you've got patterned on the other side. And then when you, I don't know if there's a picture inside, no. So this is foundation paper. We've gone on a bit of a tangent into sewing though, but this is um, log cabin foundation paper. So it just makes stuff more accurate because then you start with your square and then you add like a square two here. So you would sew on that line, add three along that line and then flip it once you've sewn it. So you sew it right sides to right sides and then flip. Stitch and flip it's called. Um, but you can line it up so you've got all your 
lights together so it makes like a diamond pattern and it looks really cool so that's my plan with my rainbow jelly roll and my plain jelly roll when it'll get done who knows but hey i'll be retired one day hopefully when i'm 85 the way that i'm not going to get into politics but the way pensions are going at the moment Okie dokie, let's have a look at some heffos. Finished objectos. The first one is... Uh, this is a sample I have knit for um, Stevie from Curated Yarn. Which is inside out because I've just finished... I haven't blocked it and I'm going to send it back to Stevie unblocked because I don't want to over block it this is the uh, beautiful dawn sweater I'll put it up close so you can see the colours and it's a it's really cool pixelated look colour work jumper the pattern is by Unwind Knitwear and uh, like I say, I knit it in Curated Yarn Co. This was the main colour. And that is carbon. And this was the contrast, which is secondhand rose. So it's Curated Yarn Co. So I've just got, a, uh, I'm just waiting for an email to send it back to Stevie. And then she can have it on her stand. So, yeah, it was really nice to knit, but it was a lot of knitting. Uh, I think it's the first all over colour work sweater that I've done. And it's quite nice because you have like a rest row in between every. That's what gives it that pixelated look. Um. Leavages. Yeah, so that was good fun. These things always take longer than we expect, don't they? I expected it to be done by the end of April, but it won't. Um, oh, dropped me little gnome. The next one I've uh, finished, but I haven't woven in any ends uh, because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet because it's a bit small. Is my radvent cowl it's not small it's just a bit i have to like i've got a big head and it's difficult to get over my head i have to like really pull it over my head oh god oh, i can't i've got the hair up in a ponytail so i might wear it i could wear it like a headscarf that would look that would be cool um because <laughs> i've got my hair up it won't go over my head so I don't know what I did wrong. I did well. I didn't do anything wrong, but I think my gauge is obviously well off, and I did block it before I did the top eye cord. So I might undo the top eye cord and um because it's not overly stretchy. So I'm and I might unravel the eye cord at the top and go up a needle or two size because I think. Look, it's the it's the eye cord that's not stretching enough because there's plenty of give there. So I'm gonna do. I think I'll do that. I will unravel and start again, but go up like two needle sizes perhaps to do the do the eye cord because the the bottom one's stretchy. So I don't know. Um, this was knit in Spectrum fiber. The main color was a one of the kind. Um, and the beautiful Surrey alpaca was called Patisserie Daydream. And my lovely Soph gave this to me for Christmas, the yarn for Christmas. So, um, and I knew it was going to be a Radvent cowl. But I just, like I say, I need to unpick that because I can't get it over my fat head. Uh, 
this is one of my favorite finished objects so this is Daphne so if you remember in my last podcast Rachel had made me one for my birthday um, and she also made one for Sophie and gave it to her when we went to Wonderwall and gave one made one for Claire out of all Bird Street yarn um, which Claire had on the stand at the weekend of Wonderwall so this is Daphne she is made with leftovers from my mild magic um I couldn't tell you what your I could tell you what your arms but I don't know what I used like loads of different yarns and I think I added or I might have added in some that weren't in my mild magic yeah so they were all the yarns that I used she used a total of 422.3 meters so she's great for scraps you could do you know all the different stripes different colors uh you could do one stripe of one color one so she is they are really cool for using up scraps I did a little brown beak on her a little cool wattle I used for the what uh for the wattle and the comb I used the same I crocheted you're supposed to just crochet this seam and then mattress stitch these but I crocheted all the way down because uh, Rach had done that and it was a really good tip to crochet down my mattress I need to get better at seaming because she looks like she's been mangled by a fox but she's so squishy they're just like the perfect size to like fit under your arm and cuddle don't they so she sits on top of the bookcase with large marge i did have them on the back of the sofa and the cat was asleep on the sofa one day and i moved and oof, onto the cat she was not impressed so we had to move them she was like what the have i been attacked by she's a bit sweary our, our female cat and because she's got an underbite she talks with a lisp like that yes we do have voices for our cats would you expect anything different no of course you wouldn't uh next up are some sockages i should have brought sock blockers in but I'm not going out to get them because that'll be in another pause and we ain't doing that. So the first one is uh, uh, Fab Funky Fibres. And this is a Rainy Day Rainbow. And I buy the petite sock sets from them, which is a 50 gram sock set. And I can get a pair of socks for myself. So these would have been cranked on my Imperial sock machine. I then uh, cut the tube in half. So a cuff on one end of one half and a toe on the other end. And then cut in for afterthought heels. So I'm looking forward to wearing these come the autumn. Although the way it is at the moment, I might be wearing them. We've actually got sun today, but the day before yesterday, it was bloody freezing. I was contemplating putting the heating on. I was like, no, it's nearly June. I'm not putting the heating on just bundled up in a jumper and some blankets it was flipping freezing second pair are these ones which are wider stripes again these are a fab funky fibers and the colorway is tommy um yeah they're really cool i like the quite like the thicker stripes um and again i Oh, I don't know what that contrast there I think is stonewashed from Brad Street. This is just a random pink I had lying around. I've got a, a one of the Hohe and Co ball bowl ball boxes. Um it's like a cubed leather box case. I don't know. Oh what words are eluding me um anyway i've got one of them um 
and I put my tubes in there and um, like when I finish, so when I finish my stripe on, oh, that's quick. Um, if I've got like 20 grams or more of that left, it'll go in there to be used as a contrast. I dropped my show notes, but on the floor, I'm dropping everything today. Yeah. Yes. So, and then the third pair of socks that I finished this month were these glittery. I don't know if you can see how. Oh, there! If I hold it like that, glittery, beautiful rainbowness. This was a advent skein from. Uh, the yarn badger not this christmas the christmas before um how was it this christmas no i don't think it was this christmas i'm now questioning myself i've got a feeling it was christmas before so i don't think i got an advent skein last year um and it came with a 20 gram mini so it was two 50 gram skeins of yarn. So I used one skein to knit the Everyday November mitts. I'm sure that's what they were called. Everyday November mitts. Um, so I didn't use the mini skein. So I've used it um, in this to do the heels, toes and cuffs. And again, they're going to be beautifully, beautiful, sparkly, rainbowy goodness to put on my feet come the autumn or do I save them for Christmas nah life's too short wear all the socks and then I finished hello there well hello there this was the mystery knit along from imagine landscapes who are gnome extraordinaire he's really cool um so it was a bit like mm, where are we going with this um i did sew his feet on upside down that's supposed to be his heels but who knows uh his little nose i like his little bendy hat and he's holding on to the end of his hat because he keeps blowing away and his beard I did um I put some suri I held it finger away and a suri to get white up uh, just a plain suri and she advised or she recommended to use self striping yarn um and it's because you knit it so when when the clue came out you just knitted like this flat panel of like bendy but it just like arced so it's like Ooh, where's this going um and then you once you blocked it you kitchen it kitchened kitchen nerd it that's a difficult word to say isn't it kitchen nurse stitched it together <laughs> oh my god so i used a like a micro striping yarn this is uh from I think it was the yarn badger again. No, it wasn't. It was felt fusion. The nimble. Yeah, felt fusion I used. Um, and it was a skein called Vintage Christmas. Um, so I'm gonna crank the rest of the because I used very minimal. I used 55 meters of the self-striping. So you can see on the arm the colours in because you did it in a small circumference I called the colours sort of like were blocky but in the body they it gave it this really cool effect um and then i just used a i don't know where the yellow mini was from so it's like a lemony yellow mini for his feet and his hat and then yeah his little beard and then uh, because that he was my april gnome because the mystery knit along started the day after my birthday and finished on the very last day of April. So 
but I think the last day all we and the last clue all we had was the nose and the beard so he was pretty much together and just had to sew knit those two bits and sew on the arms and the feet and then so for my May gnome this is Ganeel of a Grimblewood um, and when he did his hat, he did this eye cord loop and sewed a button onto his hat. So it held his... Um, again, I've got no idea what the yarns are. They are minis. They were all random minis. This... Uh, it almost... Oh, uh, that was two separate yarns. Um, striped. So I went for sort of fairly low contrast. This raspberry pink and then this is um i try i'm using most of the time i'm using the same yarn for the beards um and this one had his nose incorporated into the beard as a bobble and this is resurrection stone by homespun house that is it for finished objects let me just check the show notes double check yep that's all the finished objects. I've uh, got one whip, at the, which isn't massive at the moment. And it's attached to yards. Uh, I've got my little Nomi stitch markers, uh, needle stoppers. These will be coming to my Etsy shop soon. I've got some other designs as well. I just need to get my bumming gear and get them photographed and uploaded. Um, so this is an, another emotional support chicken. This one is for my sister. Um, yarns I am using. I can't remember. I've left my little book outside, so I don't know. I've got a little notebook that I weigh everything. That's how I do my stats because I weigh everything before I start and when I finish. But I know this greeny one is a Ted Knits and this one is a Ted Knits. So I'm holding three strands of yarn together. So this is the main... This is this colour here, which is going to be my main body colour. Um, this is a Carano Designs. This is a Ted Knits from his geology gems in geo club that I did ages ago and this is a socks yeah from coop knits so i've just got to start the short row shaping now for her sides so we've done the tail crocheted the seam together this stripe is supposed to be here but i couldn't read the instructions properly could i <laughs> so we've got the stripe We've got a little bit of body, then a stripe, and then we'll carry on with the body. Um, so my, when I made Daff, here's Daff. So when I made Daff, I did two strands of fingering where it held together. This one I'm doing three strands on a five five millimeter needle. So she's going to come out a bit bigger um, because when I did Daphne, I think I did her on a four four and a half millimeter needle 4.5 millimeter yeah um so that's it so she's going to be um i'm going to cast on the stripometry maybe today i don't know i might do a bit more of daphne um daphne might do a bit more of sarah's chicken i don't know i need to we need to come up with a name for her. um yeah I might sit outside and do a bit more of Sarah's chicken before casting. I might wait till this evening to cast on the shore till dinner's done and sorted. And oh, talking of dinner, I need to get that in the slow cooker, or else it's not going to cook. Um, other than that, there's not a lot going on. Uh, I've done some more patchwork blocks this is the from the sewer lights to sew along from 
fat quarter shop in America. So this was a block. Quite enjoyed doing that block. This one. This one <laughs> was really lovely, but I sewed everything back to front. I unpicked more than I sewed, I think. Um, so it's got flying geese. This is like a double flying geese. So you do a flying geese and then added these bits on. This is square and a square. Um, this one, oh, it goes that way. It's like these hourglass blocks. And then this one, again, has got an hourglass block in the middle. Little squares around the outside. It smells really nice. Yeah, so that's those. I've got about seven more, six or seven more to do. Um, I went to the Malvern Quilt Show um, a couple of weekends ago. Went up on the coach with my quilt group, which was really, really nice. Um, and next weekend, it's a week today, Rach, Sophie and I are going to John Arben's Mill Weekend. which will be fun yeah so i expect more yarny goodness in the next episode um i think that's all i've got to talk about today can't think of anything else apologies for the you know just just you know <laughs> one day i'll get my act together but then that's what you come for. You come for the fun, don't you? You come for the fun. Um, take care. Stay safe. Be good. And I'll catch you soon. Bye.